everyone, it's Bretta Riches from runforfit.com and today I'm going to be talking to you about running injury prevention 101 and I'm going to do that by describing to you the differences in impact forces between a heel strike landing and a forefoot strike landing running style and how specific components of impact force variables associated with heel strike running has greater implications to running injuries than forefoot running. And I'm going to do this by showing you a few graphs from Dr. Daniel Lieberman's work on barefoot runners versus shod runners. So if you were to plot a graph of what the impact force looks like when a runner heel strikes, meaning the first part of the foot to strike the ground is the heel, and the last part of the foot to contact the ground is the forefoot, that's what a heel strike landing style is, this is what it looks like. So graphically, this is what the impact force looks like when you heel strike during running. And this entire line or slope is called the ground reaction force, which means the impact created by the body weight of the body that lands with the ground during heel strike running. So it's essentially the force of the body weight that is exerted on the ground during the initial contact phase of running, during the support phase of running, and during the propulsive phase of running or toe off, which is the final phase of running. Now always remember that both heel strike running and forefoot strike running generates a ground reaction force because the force of the body weight is always interacting with the ground. But what I really want you to pay particular attention to is on this graph is the little sharp peak on the left labeled the impact transient and the term impact transient essentially means, in this case, a very large break or deacceleration force that is occurring as soon as the heel strikes the ground during running. This means that the weight of the body is coming to a dead stop and this stoppage or deacceleration period is more intense and has a longer duration than a forefoot strike landing. This impact transient or the abrupt breaking force period that is produced when the heel strikes the ground first during running disadvantages a heel strike runner because the muscles aren't physically suited to absorb this kind of impact at this magnitude and duration, which may strongly imply why injury rates are very unacceptably high in heel strike runners. So this is a big part of the problem with respect to running with a heel strike because this impact transient or dramatic break force unleashes a tremendous amount of impact. And there really hasn't been a strategy devised to completely reduce this impact force transient variable. Clearly running shoes aren't the solution because with increasing advancements in running shoe technology, there hasn't really been a decline in injury rates in heel strike runners. So this is why I have no interest of running with a heel strike because why run with extra impact? It's just going to project more labor on the body, but to help reduce injury, it sure isn't with heel strike running. To solve the problem of the brake force or impact transient of the ground reaction force during running, one of the signature health benefits of forefoot running is the complete elimination of the impact transient as you can see on this graph which shows the impact pattern of a forefoot strike landing running style, you can see the impact transient or abrupt dead stop braking force is gone. All that you see is the standard outline, which is a smooth outline of the ground reaction force, but the braking portion is not evident because you don't have that sharp peak on the left that was seen in a heel strike landing style on the heel strike landing style graph that I showed you first. So why is the impact transient gone or abolished in a forefoot strike landing during running? There are many mechanical determinants of forefoot running that allows for a smoother, less forceful exchange of the body weight with the ground. For one, the front of the foot usually points downwards just before the foot strikes the ground in a forefoot strike landing. This helps the runner land on the front of the foot but allows for also a slide-like interaction between the foot with the ground, which is less jolting on the body. If you really want to see exactly how this looks, I would urge you to check out the running style of Galen Rupp and how he positions his foot just before his foot strikes the ground. His, in my opinion, his forefoot strike is very nice. 
in my eyes, and that's part of the reason why he's so very mechanically efficient. So the absence of the impact transient alone is enough to provide the protection a runner needs to help avoid injury in forefoot running. So this graphical representation of a forefoot strike is one of the main reasons why I stand behind forefoot running as being the running style you can count on to provide relief from your running injuries and boost your running performance because the low or next to none brake force makes it easier to run with less impact when you run with a forefoot strike. Based on this data alone, forefoot running should be the only path to help you run injury free because there is less impact that is displaced on the body. It doesn't help anyone to run with more impact as per heel strike running. That's why I encourage runners to run forefooted because you get more out of your training across the board. And because the brake force is essentially so minimal or gone in forefoot running, forefoot runners don't require running shoes because it's becoming more evident in the scientific literature that running without shoes with the forefoot strike does not produce any more impact. So forefoot running is a more rosy mechanical scenario that leads to safer running. And this is why I really think that forefoot running makes running work for you and not against you. So for more information about forefoot running versus heel strike running, please head on over to my blog, runforefoot.com. We'll also find my reviews and recommendations on barefoot inspired footwear that are more conducive for forefoot running. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated on all the latest research regarding the biomechanics of running. Thanks for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads. Bye for now.